Welcome to the American Dream Podcast World Tour. Today, we're excited to host a special guest from the UK sharing their perspectives on the success and fulfillment. Join us for a cross-cultural exploration of the American Dream and its global resonance. Welcome aboard. This is the American Dream Podcast. I'm in a studio with Neil Gome. Gom. Gom. Yeah. <laughs> From England. It's yes. so nice to meet you. Welcome to the show. So first question right away. Is it correct to say UK, England, uh, United Kingdom, Great Britain? Yeah. Which one is it? Which one? <laughs> yeah, so it's it's funny. I'm from England, which is in Great Britain. Yes. Which is part of the United Kingdom. So three different I know. This is why I asked. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so so England is a country like Wales and Scotland mm -hmm. in that are part of Great Britain. Which so it's England, Scotland, Wales, and then the United Kingdom is England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. That's crazy. See, go. this is why I love interviews like this, because yeah. I totally thought that United Kingdom is yes. just England. Right. No, it's the United Kingdom. So mm -hmm. they bring them all together. So yeah. it's the it's the same uh, queen or king for Correct. all the three little yes. parts of it? Yes. So that, that they rule ah. overall. Yes. So the queen, when she was around, well, they still do have a, a residence in Scotland. Mm -hmm. and That's um, so interesting. Yeah. I never knew that before. There you go. I'm also a little starstruck right now and a little nervous about this interview because okay. of your English. Yes. Um, when I lived in Russia, I was taught British English. Okay. So right now it's like an examination for me and I feel insecure <laughs> about my English because Not you are the native speaker and you yes. sound like the English language books oh, that really? I was taught in Russia. So yes. your pronunciation, the question, yes. how do you do? Yes. And the question, who is on duty today was asked every morning in my school when I used to live in Russia. So Fantastic. I'm just very excited about this and learn your story. So let's start yeah. about your background. Share about yourself. Yeah, so I grew up uh, with a, a military family background. So my dad was in the Royal Air Force. Uh, we traveled uh, quite a bit in the early my early part of my life. Uh, actually lived in Germany for two years mm -hmm. when he was based out there. And then uh, all over the south of England mainly is mm -hmm. where, we, where we moved to. Uh, born on the uh, south, uh, sorry, the northwest of England. England. I was uh, northwest, sorry, of London, just on the outside. And I pretty much spent most of my life um, after the military. My dad came out in the military, spent most of my life in the northwest of, of London, just outside. A uh, little village I grew up in, um, super cute. I've, I've actually just recently been back to visit a number of times and uh, now appreciate how cute the villages were back there. Um, I grew up there, had a great childhood, uh, very sporty, uh, football, tennis, or soccer, sorry, soccer, mm -hmm. tennis. Soccer, that's yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> and all kinds of sports. Uh, loved loved it growing up there. Um, I was always ambitious. Always kind of wanted to travel, and mm -hmm. uh, was very fortunate. And uh, I started working for Coca Cola, uh, which is an American company mm -hmm. originally, and uh, incredible business to work for. Loved every virtually every minute of it. I really enjoyed my time there. Worked for them for fifteen years, wow. and in that fifteen years, I actually got to uh, take a sabbatical from mm -hmm. from work there and travelled. So very lucky to have visited many countries, went with my best mate. We were students at the time, so they did a degree program with Coca-Cola where I would study um, one day a week mm -hmm. and the rest I would work for them. And they paid for the degree and mm -hmm. paid for me to work for them. So it was an incredible opportunity that uh, I got. And um, in that time, once I'd finished the degree, um, with my student, because I was a student, I was able to get a travel ticket for very cheap because I was a student to go around the world. So it was le it was about a thousand pounds to travel to 10 countries. I thought you were talking about weight right now. Pounds is pounds the currency. Is, is the currency. <laughs> uh, yes. So See? around maybe $1,200. Wow. Okay. Yeah, to travel for 10 different countries. Which steal. Was incredible. That's a steal, steal of a deal. So I took it and I traveled and got, you know, worldly and loved it. Really enjoyed it. So I knew and I visited America as okay. well as part of my journey there. Yes. Loved, loved America. Loved, loved seeing it and, and experiencing it. How old were it. you? 
At this time, I was 22. Okay. 22. Okay. And you fell in love instantly with America. Yes. But you weren't able to move here yet. It was just Correct. your traveling yes. experience. When did you decide to move here? So I, in my uh, sabbatical as well, mm -hmm. I also spent uh, three months coaching tennis at a summer camp in, mm -hmm. in America. So one of my dreams was to actually start a, a summer camp in England. Mm -hmm. but And so I was doing all these different coaching awards and everything while I was working at Coke still, just in my spare time, all the different coaching awards to try and build up knowledge to kind of have an opportunity to build a summer camp in England. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. what I didn't realise is that, well, not what I kind of did very early on, is that we don't really have a lot of summer in England. So oh, over really? here, we have a, you have three months where the kids are off school. Mm -hmm. And so making a business is a little bit easy when you've got three months to work with. Mm -hmm. In England, you've only got six weeks. The kids only have six week holidays. Oh. So to make a business on a summer camp or make it profitable or anything was really mm -hmm. difficult. Mm -hmm. So I, it quashed the idea. But in, in the time that I was learning and, and educating myself about summer camps, I went to Portland, Maine to run to work in a summer camp there. And that is where I met my wife. So um, she was the basketball coach and I was the tennis coach and uh, met her there. We spent um, the summer there together. And then afterwards, I traveled to her house after I, I went there and stayed there for a couple of weeks. And then uh, three months later, she came to, to England to visit me, spent uh, a month there with us. Then she went back home. Then she came back for six months. Mm -hmm. as they was. Then I knew she was the right one. Mm -hmm. And uh, six months later, we married um, and she moved to England with me. Mm -hmm. so she spent... That was going to be my next question, yeah. because usually uh, people ask, well, why didn't you stay in your home country with your significant other from America? Right. You know, so did she love England? Uh, yes. She well, wanted yes. to stay there, like Absolutely. live there forever? Um, it, it was close. So she because of the we had children and uh, she was away from her family. Mm -hmm. um, there was a she loved it. And my family were wonderful as well. But. There, it was mainly driven by me. I have a passion to move to America. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I always have since I've been here and, and just love the culture and love everything about it. So I was like, I really want to go. At some point we need to go. And we're, so when we had the kids, it was it was a, a moment then when we said, well, do we bring them up here or do we bring them up in America? Yes, you have to decide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we, we made the choice to, to, to go to America. So after six years of her being there... We chose to move move back over here, but it was a funny funny moment actually. We we had our our daughter Emma. Obviously knew it was happening, but we got a surprise to find out we were pregnant again. And um, it was at the time where I was had my visa. I was going through the whole visa works, mm -hmm. and I was I'd actually received the visa just before I received the information that my wife was pregnant. Wow! Double so, surprise. Double surprise. So the only challenge was that we were having twins. So we found out we're having twins. Oh so, my god! So one of the, and we'll probably talk about this at some point though. But is over here, healthcare is very expensive, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's, it's um, paid, and you know, if I wouldn't have had insurance at the time because I hadn't even moved over there. So of course, we ended up staying in England, where it's nationalised health service, so it's all free. Um, so we had the twins over there, and I uh, extended my visa, and eventually came over after the twins That's were born. Smart. So, yes, yeah. absolutely. Did you have any expectations? Because that's a pretty big change in life to move your kids with you, with your family, you know, pack all of those bags and do that cultural and dump it on your kids too, right. even though they were very young, right? right. Yeah. They yeah. Would, you know, we had it at the, uh, the, my daughter was two and oh, she uh, was only she was two. Se okay. 17 months, sorry, 17 months and my, and my twins were just born. Okay. So they were very young, wouldn't know right. any different, okay. uh, to, wouldn't know what they're missing out on. Absolutely. Or okay. So <laughs> on them, it was easy. Year, yes. Definitely. And you always had that passion for America. So yes. you had the big desire and it's your wife's homeland. Right. So I guess it was a little bit easier for all of you. So did you have any expectations on how your life in America is going to look like? Absolutely. I'm a planner somewhat as well. So I had a list of things that I wanted to do, things that I wanted to buy, mm -hmm. you know, and stereotypes. It's so stereotype. I mean, I wanted to I wanted a cowboy hat. I wanted. I wanted. I wanted, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted well, to ride a school bus. <laughs> this, there you go. I had school I, on my vision. I have a vision board with all the things that I want in life, and one of them was to see my kids get on a yellow bus, <laughs> to get on a, one of the yellow buses you see on the TV. So yes, I'm the same as you. So yeah. Um, so I had yeah cow and just being. I wanted to be an American. Like I wanted to live the American life. Like mm -hmm. totally immerse myself. Mm -hmm. 
And the funny thing was, is I started a British business with my sister-in-law. It was a big instigator of this over here. Um, I started a, a, a British f f uh, food business and became more British than I've ever been. <laughs> So I come over here and now, <laughs> you know, I, I wear all Union Jack clothes mm -hmm. or something, the British looks mm -hmm. or anything, you know, it's and my got everyone buys me Union Jack presents at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And you know, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I try, I'm trying to be an American, but everyone it doesn't work. Reminding me. Just, yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. Did you had any challenges when you just moved here with your three children? So more on my wife, she obviously bringing up three kids mm -hmm. um, and they're all un under the age of two at the time mm -hmm. and all at the same time while we were starting a business as well. And obviously, you know, everyone knows when you start a business, the first couple of years are incredibly, you know, you're involved um, yeah, 24 seven Absolutely. almost is, is so much. So um, kudos goes to her with most of it that she had to bring up and she we, we moved in with my mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges we had was I could I didn't have any credit coming over here. Oh, so yeah. to buy a house, I couldn't buy a house. So what I I mean, I could have there's different ways of doing it. I could have worked for somebody mm -hmm. and then built up enough to. Or if you have cash or if you have cash. Yes. absolutely, Yes. Yeah. yeah. You could have done it that way. But um, so a business has to run for two years and show uh, tax tax mm -hmm. for two years. And so I had two years where I wasn't able to buy a house. Mm -hmm. So in building the business and everything we were living with a mother-in-law which was you know it mm -hmm. actually worked out brilliantly but it was a different different setup for yes. me coming over and everything as well absolutely so, absolutely yeah. how did you navigate all of that when did that started going away uh, the feeling of yeah. so the feeling of you sharing your space with you know your wife's mom she was yeah. probably very helpful though right Fantastic. i believe for for the yeah. kids for her grandchildren yeah. uh, but it was still a little bit different of a life than what you expected it to look how did you navigate that absolutely so i had this vision i've got a vision board pictures of houses that i wanted like a picture of a house mm -hmm. that i would love to live in i had the dream of being out in the country you know in in a farmhouse in, in the country with land and everything, you know. Mm -hmm. And so she fortunately had a house in the in somewhat in the country, like most houses here are in just in the land. Yes, have land <laughs> in the middle is, of the forest. Yes, <laughs> she does. That's how it actually was. So, so we had, you know, we had that. But living with the mother in law was actually very helpful. So it meant that my wife had somebody there all the time helping her and, and guiding her and everything as well. So we're very flexible. So we tend, you know, very adaptable. I think when you come to another country, you have to be because mm -hmm. you are turning up everything to, to 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 kind of fit in and to do different things that you weren't doing before. So, um, you know, having a good good mindset on it and everything, I absolutely I've, overcoming challenges. You know, that's mm -hmm. what that's what I enjoy doing, like problem solving and mm -hmm. everything as well. So, so saw it as a challenge, but I think I think my wife got more of the brunt of it because she was bringing up kids is obviously a pleasure you know, when you're seeing the mm -hmm. the benefits at the end, but when you're bringing them up at the time, it's maybe not so much. So um, she, she definitely took the brunt of most of that pain. Mm -hmm. And whereas I was creating a business, which was fun and exciting and, mm -hmm. you know, new and, and everything was sort of fortunately going well. So it was all good fun. And, um, and she was involved at the start as well. She actually helped out with the business as well as the kids as well. So we swapped a little bit where I would look after the mm -hmm. kids and she would come in and cook and mm -hmm. do things like that. As well. So how long ago did that happen? How long ago did you move to the US? So it was 10 years, 10, uh, just over 10 years, nearly 11 years. Yeah. Ago. Wow. I moved yes. here around the same time, actually. Yes. I moved here in 2014. Okay. So you were probably 13. here at 13. I was. That's right. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It seems like everybody who I interview moved here around that same time. <laughs> The moon was probably located Sorry. somewhere in a special location for all the stars to align, for yeah. all of us to end up here yeah. and then meet each other in Springfield, Missouri. So did you move to Springfield, Missouri first or where did you move to Correct. in the US? Yes, this was uh, my wife's home. So she was she was born just, just north of Springfield and her family were all around oh, like okay. Rogersville and all the local area. Okay. So, yeah. Have you ever thought about moving somewhere away or do you like this location? That's a great question because um, I grew up in a town just outside of London. So yeah. I had a village. I had kind of the open countryside, but I was thirty minutes away from getting yeah. into London, and I kind of like that. I like having the stress-free atmosphere mm -hmm. and then being near a big city. Springfield is not a huge city, but mm -hmm. it's big enough to kind of have some things. I, I miss having lots of things going on, um, like things to go and do and and see here has got some things to do but once you've done them you know you've done them mm -hmm. back home you have like events and and 
theatre production, big things that are coming in all the mm. time. Um, and it's you don't have to go very far to be in a different, huge, huge different town or different places as well. So you here is very isolated a little bit. It's three hours to Kansas City or three hours to, or two and a half and, mm-hmm. and two and a half to Tulsa. It's quite a drive to go. Yeah. Whereas in England, you've got towns, big towns everywhere where there's lots of different things going on. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you, so do you let your British inner <laughs> root come out for your children also? Do you want them to follow some of the British traditions? So I'm very much letting them find their where they want to go. Um, and I just... Because I'm just who I am mm-hmm. and I'm I'm a huge soccer player mm-hmm. but I still play and I still follow and I still do everything so yeah I would love my kids to you know be into mm-hmm. soccer because I've got a common you know and commonality with them um the but my daughter definitely would love to speak you know in a British accent and yes. everything and she does say you know, when to people as well I'm you know I'm half English mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, it's and she loves it she loves it and she when we went over there she really enjoyed the place and it felt. is a very pretty accent like I said I think people who speak with a British accent automatically sound 10 times smarter than anyone else <laughs> <laughs> it's just because the dialect is yeah. super it's the book you know dialect yeah. that I was taught to right. so I think the exact same way so yeah. speaking of that British route yes. that you have going on how yeah. did that route help you to become successful here in the US because you are a business business owner mm-hmm. here. So mm-hmm. share a little bit about that. Yeah. So the the business that I run is a, is a food truck business, but it's also a restaurant and it's British food. So the concept, my sister-in-law, um, this, it, ha- it all started with my sister-in-law coming to visit my wife mm-hmm. and her having a what is called a pasty, which is a handheld pot pie. So it's a mm-hmm. golden flaky pastry and inside multiple different flavors and mm. fillings that you can mm-hmm. make. Well, she's a chef, loves cooking everything she she eats out all the time very well versed with all the different cuisines mm-hmm. and everything as well uh, it's got a great taste buds and a great cook just i've had all of it before i even started the business i knew she was a great cook mm-hmm. so she came over and had a pasty for the first time and just thought it was incredible like so versatile but tasty on the go it was it was everything so she she kind of created and said to me if if you can sell it i'll make it kind of thing you know and we'll start a business together so um And I was, and when I came here, I realized with the accent, and with the accent for sure, and the love of the UK from the Americans. So it's funny, you know, different countries have different meanings and different thoughts and everything to people. And very fortunate that the British are well received by the Americans, like really well received. They love you are lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so you know, even um, the military is is probably one of the best examples of where the. Americans love like go, like connecting with the Brits when they're when they're on you know military mm-hmm. exercise or anything like that. There's just a good camaraderie and a good good relationship with each other. So I was very lucky when I came over that whenever I went anywhere and I spoke, every, you know everyone looked at me or the way amazed. I do <laughs> <laughs> like this. <laughs> so yeah, and 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 Springfield doesn't have a huge. At British population, like I was going to ask you, do you have a lot of British friends here? So I, I started a, a Facebook group for Brits and uh, called Brits Living in Four One Seven, and we've got just over a hundred people on there. Okay, and I pretty much know like ninety percent of them, or probably seventy percent, well enough to com- converse. And then, and some of them are just customers that come mm-hmm. in and popped in here and mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do have close friends that are that are Brits from here. I think you mm-hmm. do. You have to, you know, mm-hmm. you miss home and you want to talk about something. And so you connect with your, your British friends over here. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll so put all there. these links in our uh, podcast as well. There you go. And what is your business called and where can people learn more about it and yeah. maybe visit you? Sure. It's London Calling Pasty Company mm-hmm. is the name of the company. And we have uh, two food trucks. One is a pasty mm-hmm. truck with, um, and then one is a fish and chip truck. So you can get British fish and chips on, on on the go. So we visit all the towns in Springfield and around Springfield, go all the way out to West Plains, to Carthage, up to Camdenton and down to Branson. So that mm-hmm. kind of area. And then uh, we have a place in Nixa uh, in 14 Mill Market, which is a new food hall. Uh, great concept with 10 food, food places. And we're one of those. And we have a full menu of pasties and fish and chips and everything there that's so you can find awesome yep. that's great so you mentioned a little bit about how well americans welcome um english people yeah people from england yeah um is there any stereotypes at all that somebody said to you about you being from the uk yeah i mean so people will always 
uh, try to talk like me. So they will always sound like Dick Van Dyke uh, from Mary Poppins. Like, hello, Mary uh-huh. Poppins. Uh-huh. Um, the stereotypes were probably like beer drinking, you know, like really? you can really drink. So I went to a few parties or social events at the start and they're like, oh, is this beer strong enough for you? And, you know, just I don't know things why like- Americans think people from that continent drink so much because, well, I'm from Russia. The yeah. stereotype about me is vodka. For vodka you, it's beer. Yeah. But Americans drink a lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I don't understand why the rest of the world doesn't have the same stereotype for Americans, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know? It's so not fair. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Budweiser is a sense. huge brand. All these brands are, yeah, are yes. always in your face and always there and everything as well. But I, And, and it's somewhat rightfully so. I mean, the drinking is... It, it's huge in England, so it is a big part of our, what, our life. What age is the legal age for drinking in the UK? Uh, 18. 18, okay, same thing in Russia. Yeah, here yep. is 21, so yep. they start drinking later, but heavily. <laughs> yes, yeah, because they've, they've been held back. Yes. Uh, I think it's actually good in terms of, uh, so we drive at 18. How, how does it work in Russia? What, what age are you allowed yes, to drive? Yes, 18. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think it's got it right in a way. I mean, 16 is very young to be driving very here at like young. 17. I, I, that makes me nervous. But I think driving at 18 is a good thing. And then maybe drinking, to, like to drink and drive at the same time mm-hmm. is kind of a weird thing for, mm-hmm. for us to do in England. That, that, that would be my, my lookout is we drink and drive at the same time. So people go out and drive to parties and drive to stuff and they can drink. So there is problem, you know, mm-hmm. drink driving. That's that. But here, I guess people will, will do it. So, but. how are those rules going to work for your kids? I'm just curious. Yeah. Are are they going to be allowed to drive when they're 16? Are they going to obviously <laughs> like it's illegal to drink at the age of 21? Sure. But you know, in some home, you know, spaces, yes, you can have some yeah. wine or something like sure. that. It's not that big of a deal. So, how is that going to look for your children? Yeah, yeah I mean, if uh, so. Uh, I, t- I don't want to. I- I'm very much in the rules. So if if it's, I won't, you know, my kids will abide by the rules of 21 and everything. If we go to England, I, t- I don't mind them having a drink at home. You mm-hmm. know, when they were old enough. Yeah. My, I'm fortunately from a family that doesn't really drink and never have drunk. So I and I'm, I don't think my we'll see what happens with my mm-hmm. kids right now and everything. Mm-hmm. But I d- I I. I, I'm not going to stop them, like forcefully at, stop them in the house to have one drink. I'll let them have, you know, a taste of it and see what it's yes. like. But um, I think restricting it a lot of the time makes them want to it's do it worse, more. Yeah. Yes. What about yeah. driving? Driving at the age of 16? Are you yeah, going to allow worries, that? It worries me. I mean, it, it's all about confidence. If I feel confident enough that they drink, because it's funny here with the driving, I don't want to offend any Americans. Okay. So I'll, I'll be careful with what I say here, but uh, the roads are wider and there's more space here, but people are less careful, I think, mm-hmm. here in driving. Mm-hmm. So in England. They got car insurance. That's it. Yeah, they're <laughs> <Don't> okay. <care. laughs> so, so here I find. Um, the rules are a little more lax as well in mm-hmm. terms of what you have to do. My driving test over here took me, I can't even remember. It wasn't long. It was like 30, 30 not even 30 minutes. And I it drove, was pretty didn't, short, yeah, yes. I didn't drive very far and mm-hmm. the test was very easy. And my wife, actually, this is a great story. My wife was driving here. She was 23 years old. I know, what is she, 25 years old and moved over to England, had to get a driving uh, license. Mm-hmm. So she had to take a test. She failed it. She, well, don't you have to drive on the opposite side of the correct. road too? Yes, you have to That's drive on the other change. side. Yes, yeah. and it was a manual vehicle as well, so she had to learn how oh, to God. do clutch control and everything as I well. I'd probably never drive in England. <laughs> <laughs> I would just take the red bus. <laughs> there you go. Transport's everywhere, so yes. you're, it's not easier. But yeah, it's a lot harder in England to mm-hmm. do the test, and you have to do the a pre-test, and and yeah, it's it's. Here I was a little bit surprised at how relaxed it was um, and lane disciplines on the road as well mm-hmm. and like hi- motorways and highways is definitely a lot more relaxed. Uh, people sit in the outside lane yeah. a lot more and, and don't don't heed to a lot of the conditions. Mm-hmm. So it's that's different for me, you know. Is there yeah. any other differences between UK and US that worries you? For your children's future a little bit, maybe, or not worries, it maybe interests you for them yeah. to explore since you didn't get to explore all of that when you were younger. Yeah. My only concern going forward, there's a couple of things, I guess, economy wise, you know, the, the getting on the ladder and housing and affordability of things and everything as well. It, I think um, the big the big thing that I think is a challenge here is the healthcare. care. Um, it, it frustrates me a little bit 
Um, fortunately, I've not had to use it too much, but I have had to use it. It's very, very expensive. Um, Extremely. Re- yeah. I mean, it can sadly ruin you. That's the scary thing. Mm-hmm. Like, And uh, somewhat think, it, you, you know, that kind of thing shouldn't, should never be something you have to worry about almost. I'd like, mm-hmm. you know, if I know the government and politics is very, you know, there's lots of different sides and everything for for everything, but one of the things I'd love to see is 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 healthcare looked after so that people don't have to. I've I've seen people turn away ambulances, you mm-hmm. know, because of the affordability of the thing. Yeah, know, some people drive pay. themselves to the hospital yes. when they feel just terrible and they have a broken leg when they're yes. giving birth. Yes, they just yes. drive themselves yeah. to the hospital just to avoid that. How much yeah. does it cost? Like ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars just to be like driving in that vehicle to the hospital? Right, that's ridiculous. And and I had a, a car accident that wasn't my fault uh, in the last year, and it goes on the other person's insurance. But it was it was extortionate amount of money for what I got as well. So the expect like how expensive it is, considering there's so much healthcare out there, how they've not dropped the prices or made it cheaper or or worked out ways to make it affordable for people to pay. Um, and then the insurance itself is extremely expensive. It's a month. It's a mortgage payment to pay for your. Ins- you know, in the UK, it's it's all included in your when you it's a tax basically, but it, it's for every everybody has to pay into it. So it's it's kind of across across the board so it's cheap so it means that you don't have to worry about healthcare and every you know even my mother-in-law when she came over to visit us she actually got looked after as well in our healthcare service so it, it, it's never a stress on you unless you have major medical and you have to mm-hmm. go to private healthcare and and you know which i i like that you know mm-hmm. there's it's so it's different. It's only different. That's my only quibble really over here is the is the mm-hmm. healthcare. Really is. Everything else kind of works and mm-hmm. for me anyway, for me. Mm-hmm. What is the approximate cost of living in the UK? Just monthly, maybe, in dollars? Like uh, let's say just like rent out an apartment, pay for a car, or just like drive on a bus. Yeah, just... so I've been out of it for 10, 10 years. The price of housing is ridiculous. I mean uh, the price doubled in 10 years since I was there mm-hmm. on a house that I sold it had doubled in price and it which is insane um so uh, housing is very expensive uh bizarrely we just went back recently and uh shopping like grocery shopping mm-hmm. is actually cheaper than the US mm-hmm. so whenever I was a kid growing up I came to America for clothing like or not came to America because I very rarely came I only came once but I was excited to get Reebok pumps you know the shoes and because everything over here was so much cheaper but I went back recently and things are cheaper in the UK than mm-hmm. they are here which is great even with the exchange rate so uh, food for sure I mean I couldn't believe I can get a I can get a sandwich a bag of crisps and, and a drink for six dollars in the grocery store mm-hmm. so five, uh, five pounds but six about six dollars mm-hmm. in the grocery store couldn't believe it all the Candy bars were maybe sixty cents, mm-hmm. seventy cents, mm-hmm. whereas they're you know a dollar ten, dollar twenty mm-hmm. here. So the um, over buying lots of things, you can see that will add up. So mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. and my friend told me that his his what his shopping bill was, and it was definitely like half of what I'm paying, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So Americans will have a successful life if they move there with their dollars. With the dollars, <laughs> weirdly now, which is not. I mean, I came here and married in. Um, two th- two thousand five six, and the, it was du- it was two to one. My pound went two to one, so I got a half wow. price wedding. And now it's not the not, not the same anymore. Yeah, no, yeah. we got a little off track. Sorry. So let's go. No, it's totally my fault. I was so <laughs> curious to learn more yeah. about the UK. All these questions, you sure. know, the the stuff you read in books, and then you get to talk to a person from the UK. Yeah. It's always so exciting. So, has there been any like exciting, memorable moment from your journey to the US that you can share with our listeners? One of the things I've said again at this vision board I go back to, like are pictures of all the things I wanted in my in my life, like are all on a board and and everything. And so I look back at it a few years ago and just realised that some, you know, a lot of those dreams that I've had um, have kind of come to reality, which is what the American dream is all about, right? Mm-hmm. Like actually seeing your opportunities and and seeing what you've got and actually and actually being able to have them. Um, so one of the things I've always loved is the RVs, you know the the vehicles on uh, that you, you house on wheels, and um, we were very, very lucky to to be able to go in one and and have a, a trip with a family in one of those for my wife's big birthday, and I got to see America. Like I haven't travelled, I've been here for ten years, and I really haven't seen 
America, which coming from the UK, the opportunities of travel are actually greater than they are here. So it's actually cheaper to travel in the UK. Mm -hmm. Weirdly, even buy a ticket to fly in and out from England is cheaper than me going from here to England. It's strange, strange how that happens. But um, I, I've just been working, 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 mm -hmm. and you get into it. And, and so I, you know, managed, we managed to take a, a trip away and go in an RV and we traveled around all the national, or not all, a few of the national parks in America and got to see the, the real America, like travel down the straight roads. And my kids got to see it all and everything as well. How so many that, states? How many states have you seen? Bef be funny, before I came to America, I saw more of the States be um, because, again, travel was cheaper going, the, you know, before. Um, since I've been here, I've mainly I've mainly been to Kansas um, and Missouri, Missouri. And then I've been to Florida on a trip trip to Florida and everything as well. Arkansas, so maybe? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Bentonville. I went to Bentonville. Bentonville is gorgeous. Yep. Oh, my God. I yep. love that place yep. so much. <laughs> so you mentioned a little bit about your American dream. Yes. Do you have an American dream? How do you feel about that concept? Yeah, so I think a lot of uh, immigrants that come here as well have that notion of the opportunities are here, you mm -hmm. know, and I and I still feel that. Like, I still feel like um, there's so many people and so many things to do and uh, things that are here available for you that, that there is still, you know, and success is, you can get success here as well. Mm -hmm. Um I, I struggled in England with red tape and, and things that buying things and, and then the local authorities and everything stopping you doing things. Um, a lot of people here want you to succeed. Um, mm -hmm. And I really feel that like the community, especially I'm going from Springfield, which is a wonderful Midwest. Yes. Yeah, it's mentality. a wonderful community. So yeah. they want you to do well, whereas mm -hmm. in England, they almost like a Don't don't want to see you doing too well. They like, do the opposite. You, yeah, bring you back. You know, bring you back down a little bit. But here, everyone wants to see you do really well. And Support you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. No. What advice would you give to other people from the UK who are considering and pursuing their American dream? Yeah, it's not easy. Um, getting here is a challenge with the visa. Um, took me about nine, ten months to go through the process. You have to have X-rays. You have to. You know, it's not cheap either. Um, research is everything. So research everything speak with people like me and that have done it and can give you a little bit of guidance mm -hmm. and everything and how it works and some of the pitfalls um get yeah the visa was what was part of it then when you were like you got to pack all your things up and you're gonna to have to sell some stuff get rid of some stuff choose what you get you know bring over um and choose wisely what you bring over you know because mm -hmm. half the stuff i haven't used so um if you think you're going to use it bring it over um and then Uh, bank accounts and things like that when you get over here you know again I didn't think about the mortgage thing and being able to do in a mortgage and submerge yourself a little bit with the community before you get here so find you know spend some time you know plenty of Connecting. time in the place that yeah mm -hmm. and probably rent before rent when you get here don't don't buy so mm -hmm. rent and just make sure it is the right place for you because you don't want to buy a place, mm -hmm. move in, and then have all the fees of moving out again so probably mm -hmm. rent, rent here for a while make sure it's good for you and working for you and then yeah and finally before we step yeah. into a break yeah did you achieve your american dream yeah i would say i'm i'm never quite i'm never ever quite there so mm. i always like there's always things that i still want to do but this move was in 10 years i look back and i'm very very grateful for what i've got over here um i i I think about what i would have had if i didn't come here and it would be different it wouldn't be less impressive or you know I, i don't think i'd be upset if i stayed in england um there's still so many things i would have done and could have done over there but here is it's just it's not a better story it's just a different story you know the schooling is not better than england my i my brother has got kids that are almost the same age as mine and they're going through and i went over and experienced their upbringing and everything and it's brilliant but it's it's no di you know it's just different from what what my kids are so um have i a check That's a great question. I've not really thought about if I've hit my dream yet. Um, I don't think I have. I think there's a, a little bit more that I'd like to to, to go uh, and achieve. I business wise, I don't think I'm exactly where I want to be. Family wise, is going brilliantly, so that's probably okay. Where I'd like to, like, I'm still not in the country. 
I still like to have that Western, like, I still want to wear a cowboy hat. I still haven't got my cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still a few more things, but I'm, I'm, I'm very happy at, at the, the, the American dream of what I thought it was going to be and what I've actually got. I'm here in the studio with Neil from England. Welcome and thank you for visiting me today. Absolutely. And we're about to take a lovely trip to the UK. You are from England, which is part of the United Kingdom. And you shared with me that United Kingdom is not just England. It's also um, Scotland and Wales. Wales and Northern Ireland. Yep. In Northern Ireland. See, I know nothing about that. Yep. I'm terrible at geography. I don't even know why we're doing the world tour. <laughs> I should go back <laughs> to school. Learn? Yes. Uh, yeah, you're taking yes. Yeah. yeah. So let's just start with a simple question. What do you think makes Americans and other people from the world want to go to the UK so bad? Because I feel like every social media influencer wants to go to London. Yep. You know, London is like the top, the top priority for everyone to go in Europe. So yes. why why is that? Yeah, so I think movies and TV has has, has hugely influenced it because whenever I meet people and talk, people, you just like the movies, you speak just like that. And if uh, when my wife and family, uh, my wife and her family came over to visit, they were like, "This is just like the movies." It's so th- that has built pictures, and it's obviously idealistic. It's the beautiful parts of the world and uh, the beautiful parts of England and, and London and everything as well. So. They see all that and they want to go over and see it. And and it is. It's impressive. Like it's um, it's well kept. So in, even in London, it's very clean. So I think it's one of the cleanest cities that I've ever been to. If you go to some some big major towns, keeping up with all the trash and everything has mm-hmm. really has been really difficult for them. Whereas in England, it seems to have been done really well. Mm-hmm. History is huge. So we spend a lot of money renovating a lot of our historic buildings and mm-hmm. um, everything as well. So it's just, it, it's really well, it's really well kept. It makes sense. It's very pretty. The, I guess when you drive down, there's lots of, it's interesting. So it's not straight lines or, or the grids mm-hmm. like here. It's kind of curves and you get to a, a big monument mm-hmm. and then, you know, I guess New York is similar as well. You've got Times Square and everything, but there's a lot of grids there and it's a, it's kind of very samey. Whereas in London, there's just different Bridges and buildings and mm-hmm. everything everywhere, like different odd buildings. Now you've got skyscrapers, huge skyscrapers, as well as little monuments right next to it. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's intriguing. And there's so much culture there as well. So, so many different, you know, it's a major town. So mm-hmm. you do have lots of tourists and everything. But we have a lot of uh, Polish influence and Indian influence, like major, major influences in, in London mm-hmm. um, and England as well. So it's um, Brexit or not Brexit, but Europe. Um, when we when we became part of Europe, um, that um, encouraged sorry it encouraged lots of people to come and visit because there were no boundaries you could visit wherever you wanted and we, it's a very wealthy country as well so mm-hmm. lots of people came in so we have a huge cultural um, diverse population mm-hmm. there as well mm-hmm. so it's really kind of fun and mm-hmm. lots of foods from all different all around the world as well so it's like any any major city but it's really well kept I think that's what what people are impressed with, you mm-hmm. know. So London deserves the hype. <laughs> I, I absolutely will will say that a hundred percent of people going there will enjoy it. It really is an incredible town. It's really well kept. It's everything you see in the movies. It looks just like it. It's it's beautifully kept. So I think, yeah. Mm-hmm. Any other places that could be just as good as London to visit in the UK that you can recommend? Very, I'm very passionate about my country. I love the country. It's so many different places to go that you see different things. So I, I people here in Missouri love to hike, and there's we've got three major mountains. One in England, which is uh, Scarfell Pike. One in Scotland, which is Ben Nevis, which is the tallest in the whole of the United Kingdom. And then we've got one in Wales, which is Snowdon. Um, beautiful little mountains that are very easily for everybody to actually climb or most people to climb you have to be in somewhat good mm-hmm. physical but well pathed and everything you got the lake district peak district all these different parts of the countryside with with mapped out walks that you can take that are just beautiful countryside if you've seen lord of the rings you know it's that mm-hmm. kind of feeling um uh, and then town wise one of my favorite places to go is brighton it's a seaside town straight south of Eng- of uh, london um it's it's got history there the buildings are super cool um it's got uh they're called the the lanes which are which is like 
you're in a small world. It's kind of shrunken. And they've got these little shops with wavy little or wonky little lanes that you go down, real mm-hmm. cobble street lanes, but tiny. Like you can only fit one, maybe two people down these lanes. So you're really tight. They've got all little bakeries and clothes shops and everything down. Um, Brighton for me is one of... And then you've got the pier where you can do all the arcades mm-hmm. and the kids have got fun stuff to do these bouncing trampolines up and and then it's it's actually a pebble beach so it's not a sandy beach just mm-hmm. a heads up but i kind of like that it's different mm-hmm. and uh brighton's a beautiful place uh one of these days i'll afford to go to brighton england and not brighton missouri there you go yes yeah, very <laughs> different from brighton missouri <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same at all uh, not the same uh, not saying it's better but it's mm-hmm. different mm-hmm. um then uh, one of my favorite places in London to, to go to is a, is a part of London called Camden Town. So I always recommend to anybody going to, to, to England or London to go to Camden Town. It's a, a market, an old market. It was actually designed, um, it was an old horse hospital. Mm-hmm. They fixed up horses and they converted it into a market. And there's all these just, again, culturally different foods. People, like a street scene where mm-hmm. they've got walks out and they're cooking them right in front of you and everything's going on. The smells are wonderful. And they've got these marketplaces with all these just unique things that you can buy there that mm-hmm. you don't buy anywhere else. Um, and and then the shops as well are just, they're not just shops. They're all painted like different pastel colours and they've got a Chinese shop with a big dragon coming out the wall and a furniture shop with a massive deck uh, rocking chair and... Um, and they've it's it's almost caught in the seventies with the punk rock era, mm-hmm. and they've actually got punk rockers that kind of stand out in the streets just with a you know the That's wild cool. punk yeah the, the 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 hair and the Doc Martin boots and <laughs> it's just an experience. Though. I always wanted yeah. to see those. What are they called? People with very tall hats with red jackets. Security. So they're called the yeah the the, the guards. So, the guards. Yeah, so, so people think they're the beef eaters. They think they're called the beef eaters, but the beef eaters are the ones with the smaller caps uh-huh. and the ones with the the the, the 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 furry hats mm-hmm. I can't remember what they call them now but yeah they're the gu- the guards okay yeah. so this is just the security people that the guards <laughs> that stand with like a gun or something yeah. that's what I want to see in see London them. that okay. and red bus apparently I'm obsessed with buses I wanted to see bus here in America I got that so now on a checklist of buses I need to see a London bus there you go have you ever rode in one by so, the way so we have one but believe it or not so we have a double decker bus at our price cutter location you ever go over there yes yeah. your business yeah, so you yes. can go on a double Real double decker. Uh, I dr- yeah, I've been on lots of them in England, but I would only, funnily enough, only in London. So I don't really use them outside of London, mm. just in London. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. How are English people? Do they welcome tourists at all? Like, let's say you're not going to London because London is obviously a touristic destination. Yes. People probably know about tourists, but yes. what about? lesser known destination like yes. Brighton or even something smaller than that if you want to explore like off the beaten yes. paths of ha- how are Brits they're yeah. very welcoming um, the Brits generally so the huge generalization are very reserved so you'll see it if you ever go on a tube in the tube uh, underground um, where they get round, round about they'll sit on the tube and they'll be looking at the wall they won't say anything they'll just keep themselves to themselves and you always know an american comes on board because they'll come on and they'll be like hey yes. have, you, have you been to see leicester square yet and you know and they'll chat away and they're super friendly the brits are very reserved we won't Would that bother them not really i mean we admire the fact that you're so confident and can chat and it's not a problem or anything mm-hmm. as well but I, it's never a problem like people asking you questions and you'll know by the face you know some people obviously don't like it but yeah. most people are will absolutely help you. So Brits are pretty friendly, helpful people. They mm-hmm. just don't, they're not outwardly going. So they, they tend to, if something's going on, they'll, they won't go to do yeah, that. Or they help. don't force yeah. it on people. They basically. don't force it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Generalization, but that's typically our, our culture is very reserved. So, mm-hmm. um, very welcoming. If you go into any, any towns to visit and tourists and everything, obviously you're there to see things and they'll be very helpful to show you what, you know, where mm-hmm. to go and what to do. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, mm-hmm. no, totally. Speaking of culture, how is British culture and how can maybe some events or traditions attract more tourists? Yeah, we do um, the royal pomp and circumstance very well. So Uh any royal event is just incredible. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is that whenever I go to an event here, like a baseball game or I've just been to see... um, uh, Messi play with uh, Sporting KC against Inter Miami, mm-hmm. and I was at the uh, Chiefs Stadium at Arrowhead. Oh wow! And they had the national anthem go in, and oh, it brings it. It, it, it 
hairs on the back of my neck go whenever I hear the national anthem and it's not even my national anthem it's crazy um, but it goes and then they had planes going across the mm-hmm. you know across the top and as well and I was like this is incredible you know this is just a game of football or soccer yeah, and they've got so it's all a whole stuff. show yeah yeah it's incredible but in England we don't do that very well like the small just you know games and things like that with all that rigmarole mm-hmm. but we do royal events very well so if you know coronations and even you know weddings and even so sadly funerals and everything there's just a cool tradition of things that they have to do and processes they go through that are, that are iconic like you will want to watch i mean millions of people watched you know the queen's funeral and you know diana getting married and um all those things that everything that we do there is incredibly well timed and, and mm-hmm. done perfectly mm-hmm. um, so that brings tourists like mm-hmm. that's what they want to see they've seen it on the TV they've seen something then they just like you want to go and see I a know. royal guard <laughs> you know it's yeah it's yes yeah history is bringing bringing people for sure is there a specific time of year that tourists should look into visiting the UK not just like going there whenever Right. But maybe a specific time. Uh, Christmas is always good with uh, the lights, you know, down all the streets, like Oxford Street and everything. Um, Christmas is a, a fun time anywhere, I think. It's mm-hmm. be, I, I would miss being in my own home at Christmas time, mm-hmm. like on Christmas, but going in there around Christmas time is beautiful. And in London, especially, they've got Somerset House that does the ice rink. They have an ice rink out there and um, it's pretty magical. And they have a winter wonderland there. And so there's lots of things going on. Um The summer, we don't really have a very traditional summer. Like you, you can't bank on us having a summer. Mm-hmm. So going in the nice weather, you really do want nice weather because you can go and see lots of things. It's very hard to do that. So um, I would, you know, April, April time is probably a good time. It's the mm-hmm. weather starting to pick up and everything. Um, but in terms of events and everything, I can't think of, uh, I, can't, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, soccer player so I would always go in season mm-hmm. when there's games on and the summer actually the games stop so I'd miss I'd miss some games but um it depending on what you would what you were looking for I'd say as to what time of the year but I can't think of the best time of year to go um I don't think you're ever going to get too hot there mm-hmm. so the summer I mean if you were to go the summer the one thing you do have to think about is we don't have air conditioning so in stores you do but in the houses in people's homes there's not really any air conditioning so you oh, gotta be careful no. with that yeah oh yeah. no so if it is hot you're in trouble uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so april could... would be perfect so yeah i think april yeah and then mm-hmm. and then october and october and december would be fun mm-hmm. just you know christmas for sure mm-hmm. yeah. what are some most iconic landmarks in the uk that you can recommend and i'm not talking about you know london eye yeah. or the big ben everyone yeah. knows those obviously yep. um maybe something that tourists tend to miss out on Yep. and just overlook yeah so i would absolutely recommend going to a little village somewhere so go to like yorkshire up north mm-hmm. and see some of the yorkshire towns um i get the yorkshire moors and the pennines somewhere i i like being outside and, and doing walks so the countryside there is just incredible um and see a village life see what it's like living out in a village in in england i would mm-hmm. highly recommend like in fact you can walk to the store grab you know, groceries just mm-hmm. at a local store and then take them home. And um, I was fortunate to live in a, a little village called Tring, which is um, just northwest of, of London. Again, just outside the beaten track, but it's got cobbled streets. Like the streets up there are, you know, oldie worldy. The buildings are still historic, a couple of, you know, two, three, four mm-hmm. hundred years old. Um, in fact, the pub that pub that one of my favorite pubs is from 1500s you know just going to see that history and kind of live in a little bit like the movies you know mm-hmm. in the little country villages mm-hmm. i would absolutely recommend that you know things like stonehenge and yeah you all your all your big things you have to kind of do because they are cool to see and and mm-hmm. see the detail on everything but the villages and going to going to a church in and, you know just seeing what how the churches are made in mm-hmm. england as well like the the stained glass windows and how long i mean how long it took to build those things is they're really incredible so no. um so yeah and then there are big things already yeah you know, i would recommend having curries uh, you know a, an indian going for an indian indian restaurant because we have got a wonderful indian population there that that food is just incredible so most indian restaurant i can't recommend you know a particular one but um in london there is a street called brick lane in london that has a line of award-winning mm-hmm. um, Indian curry houses. Mm-hmm. But any village, any town, you almost see as many pubs as you do 
uh, Indian take Indian restaurants now. So great culture around it. You know, Chinese food is is pretty good there too. But Indians, I, I think, it's one of my favourite foods. So. so what to eat and what to drink in the UK? Yeah. So drink, I would definitely would go to pubs. Are just fun. Um, I'm not a drinker at all. I would drink cokes sometimes when I go, to, or a shandy, like a half lemonade, half half beer when I go. But I love the, I just love the fires and the and the dartboards and the pool table and the so it's more community the energy. and the yeah the energy and everything of a pub. So for sure, go there. The food can be good, but it can be you know pretty plain as well in a lot of pubs. It's not. Um, you you have to go to a good pub like I know a few places that I would go that would be brilliant food but I mm-hmm. I played soccer on a Sunday and we had, were sponsored by a so, uh, by a pub team by a pub and we went there for the you know and they used to give us chips or fries um and you know things and it it wasn't great food mm-hmm. but it was enough to fill you and everything but pub food is just great fish and chips you got to have fish and chips fish for and sure chips. make sure you get it by the sea so you know there are a lot of like chains and stuff out there that will do fish and chips and they're okay But a local fish and chip shop that are catering for a village are going to be a good fish and chip shop because they know they've only got a small market. They've got to get, you know, they've got to make it good. Whereas if you go to a town or a major town or anything, you, you, you're probably going to get a generic, you know. So you said fish and chips. Yes. And this question wasn't in our script, but I have to yeah. ask you, it just popped up in my head. Yeah. Everyone knows Gordon Ramsay. Yes. Yeah. How do you feel about a person like this? He has a very short temper, obviously. <laughs> He comes across as sure. a little bit, you know, aggressive sometimes. Well, right. most of the time, let's be honest. Yeah. He has, you know, this interesting approach, how to talk to people, how to express his emotions. How do you feel about that person? Because he is from... UK, right? Absolutely. So um, how do you feel about him representing kind of your country? Because he's like one of the top, most famous UK people. Sure. Yeah, I mean, um, he uh, that's who he is, I think. I mean, he's done it for so many years. That has to be how he is. He clearly has built a following from it as well. So, I mean... Every, there's lots of different English people, mm-hmm. all different types. And say so he was actually a soccer player. He could have been played, played. He was a very good soccer player, could have played professionally and everything, chose to chose to go down this line. I think he had an injury and, and went and did it. And he's done very well out of it as a representation of the UK. Uh, I mean, he, <laughs> he knows his food, I, I would say, you know, yes. he's built a brand on the back of. I think you have to have a niche. I think you have to have something about you. And he went that way. He went the mm-hmm. fact that, you know, being a angry mm-hmm. chef is, is I just good know, for ratings. Yes. Yeah. People tend to judge the country based on one person only, like the top sure. most famous person. So, and I know there are some Russian people that represent, you know, us in a different way, in different light. So I know that he has very controversial um, temper and personality. Right. That's why I had to ask you how you feel about <laughs> that. But let's talk a little bit about transportation too yeah. in the UK. What yeah. is the best way? Is it the red bus? Is it the taxi? Is it walk? How do you transport yourself in the UK? In the UK, so you it depends where you're at. So in the London, you would do the the tube is the best way to get, depending on how far away you need to go to. So and how long you're going to be using that train uh, tube for. So if you're going for the whole day, I would get a, tra- a train card for the whole day, a tube train, and it will actually get you on the buses as well. So you can get oh. a one day travel card and it'll get you on the buses and the and the tube. Mm-hmm. Um, I would highly recommend, absolutely must do this if you go to London, is to get the red bus tour bus. So it's a double decker bus. It's uh, got audio or it, they sometimes have people talking on there. Mm-hmm. They will take you to all the places in one day, virtually. I mean, there's two routes, I think, two or three routes and maybe two days you could get to see everything. And and it's I want to say it's like 40 50 bucks maybe 50 bucks to do it absolutely worth every pay because you can get off see the thing wait for the next red bus to come around jump on go and you see everything and gives you a little bit of history and everything about it as well so couldn't agree everyone i say goes to london you must do that it's gets you around everywhere in one day my uh, dream yep there you go. <laughs> that's my american dream yeah. for me to become so rich i can go on a red bus in england <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah there you go. <laughs> no, super fun. And then, um, I mean, if you are outside a taxi, if you're looking to just jot to a certain place that mm-hmm. you're going from one place to another and that's it, a taxi would be great. You'll have a taxi drivers of cool people, like mm-hmm. different people. They're, you're, you'll hear probably a Cockney accent as well, a lot of Cockneys in there. But I've been away for so long that it might be totally different now. But um, I just used to love getting in a taxi and, and going. So we normally went from a like a pub to a pub, maybe in a taxi, and just because we knew exactly where we were going. And uh, 
Well, you'd always have a good laugh with the taxi driver. Super funny people. So Speaking of accents, yes. I have to ask you because usually when I interview guests from different countries, I ask them to tell me a little bit about their language and teach me how to say specific things. But in this case, we speak the same language. Yes. So I want to know the UK slang. Okay. Because when I told my American boyfriend that yep. I'm interviewing somebody from the UK, he was like, oh, ask him about why are they like say blood all the time, like bloody hell yeah, yeah. or bloody something. Yeah. Uh, and then they don't pronounce the H, it's bloody L is what he told me. <laughs> yep. I don't know how yep. accurate it is. He's yeah. from Clever, Missouri, so it's probably not accurate at all. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I just want to know yeah. the slang in the yeah. UK. So depending on where you are in the country, and that's the crazy thing is you... It's so tight there. There's so many people in a small amount of space mm -hmm. that the accents change like and the, and change completely within a small space, which mm -hmm. is crazy. Um, so it depends on what part of the country you're from as to whether you say, so, you know, bloody hell would be, I would pronounce the H, but if you were East London, Cockney, so, all right, mate, as it go, yeah, bloody hell, like you would probably drop the H. Uh -huh. It would be a different different sound so it would depend on where you are from as Bloody to what you <laughs> I don't even know how I can pronounce that so well, any other words that you guys say that is a slang like some Americans say you know howdy yeah. uh, what's up yeah. is it the same for probably not howdy but we what's up howdy, no alright all mate you know we use mate a lot mate. so your friend uh, or not even a friend a lot of people if you meet people uh -huh. a lot of the time you'll call them mate and you'll say alright mate all, all right, right mate. mate. Yeah. All, all right, right mate. mate. <laughs> Still a little bit more slang. Yeah. It's a all kind right, of mate. Yeah. Okay. Hello, mate. How you doing? Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, bloody L. All right, mate. Anything else? I want to pronounce something spicy. Say so spicy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, when you're meeting someone, you want to... Uh, or a cheerio, a cheerio. And you leave and say goodbye. Cheerio. Cheerio? Cheerio. Cheerio? Yeah. Cheerio. All right. Cheerio. Oh, I never knew that. It's kind of more of a posh, like a posh way. Mary Poppins would, you know, oh, kind of like, all right, okay. see you later. cheerio. Cheerio, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only thing I know from, I think it's Mary Poppins, is super color for Yeah, good idea. There you go. Can you say it backwards? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Can you? No. <laughs> no, I can't even say it one way. Yeah. I can never pronounce it the other way around. Yeah. So, okay, that was super fun. And, and they have, they have um, so Cockneys have a different language as well. Uh, so it's kind of fun. It's rhyming slang. So you would say, and it's kind of bizarre, but it's... If you, you, it's kind of a language that you're trying to say something originally mm -hmm. that they people wouldn't understand. It's kind of your language, so you would rhyme things like apples and pears, a stairs. So when, if a you stairs. want to say, "I'll oh, go up the apples and pears," uh, you would be saying, "Go up the stairs," and "I'll oh, get on the dog and bone" would be phone. So uh -huh. dog and bone, phone. So it would be lots of rhyming slangs. You could have a cold conversation with random words, and you you might not know what someone was talking about. So, That's yeah. so interesting. And also one of my coworkers asked me to ask you, how do you pronounce aluminum? Aluminium. Okay, that's what he said. And I was like, that doesn't sound the same yeah. at all. And even, I think it's urinal. We uh -huh. say, the you say the urinal, is it? Urinal for the boys' toilets. Ah, urinal, the urinal. Well, in Russia, we say toilet. <laughs> toilet, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's there's a bunch of bunch of them that people, yeah, uh -huh. we pronounce differently. And whenever anyone, an American's in England and they say Leicester Square, they say Leicester Square, and mm -hmm. and just pronounce different different letters. Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah. Would it, like people in the UK be in a way judgmental or make fun of people who are trying to speak with the UK accents? Uh, so but the Brits are not really offended much. Like the, it's funny. We have a funny relationship with a lot of countries. Like mm -hmm. the Irish um, don't uh, generalize in massively here as well. Mm -hmm. But the, the Irish are not as fond of the Brits. The Brits don't care. Like the Brits like the Irish. Like think they're funny and everything as well, and support the some of their boxers and all the different things and everything. Um, the Scots don't like the English as much. You know, not. It's, Again, massive generalization, but mm -hmm. the feel, there's a lot of feeling there. Of, yeah. Obviously, with history, right? All the things that we, you know, the mm -hmm. Brits have done and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, everything as well. But um, so, whenever someone 
you know, tries to do an accent like mm-hmm. me, I'm never really that bothered. I don't think anyone is when they're, okay. you know, messing around or anything. So, uh-huh. so yeah. Yeah, yeah to me, it's always funny too when my boyfriend tries to pronounce something with my accent. I'm yeah. just like, what are you? You're, what are you doing? You're this butchering is, it. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you're going to break your mouth trying to do this. <laughs> so finally, what is something that everyone should bring with them from their trip from London or anywhere in the UK? What they should bring. So when they go over, what they should bring back Mm -hmm. uh, with them. Uh, Whether it's an experience or an item. Yep. Oh, good. So an experience. Gosh, those experiences probably would be the places that I I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, The Brightons and the Camdens. um, Experience of Village. uh, um, Gosh. And, And then things that you should bring back, like especially Americans. I think the candy uh or sweets the candy you gotta try the candy over there it's it, it's uh over here they make the candy with uh with paraffin in it so it's, it's kind of a paraffin it's uh mm-hmm. to stop it from melting so it kind of has that waxy feeling on that's it, waxy what it taste. is yeah. i was trying to come up with i'm like this yeah. candy doesn't taste the same as russian candy yeah, either different. it's so, very yes yeah waxy. whereas ours are a little more creamy mm-hmm. um the the milk and you can taste the cocoa and and uh so Gosh, I would. I, I, every time I go home, I bring tons of candy back. Mm-hmm. That's what I bring in my suitcase is uh, is candy. Um, gosh, yeah, experiences. There's. It, it all depends on what you're into. I mean, I'm sports related, so I love to go to some of the sports venues whenever mm-hmm. I'm over there. Um, and they're especially a soccer game. A soccer game, is something special. I, I I really enjoy going to. It. If you go into a good rivalry game, the atmosphere and everything is pretty pretty incredible. Um, and then you've got to experience the red bus around London. That's just a must. Welcome back. You're listening to the American Dream Podcast. I'm here in the studio with Neil from England, and I see lots of drinks on the table. This <laughs> yeah. half of the podcast is always my favorite one because I get to see cool stuff from different countries that guests bring with them. And usually those items are either super exotic um, or super sentimental that they're just not even letting me touch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, no, no. I'm very curious. I'm putting my laptop okay. away. I'm very curious to see what you got over yeah. here. So so part of the question uh, we coming here was three things that that kind of talk about the uk like what three things for me that or i've got three or four things here that actually say to me this is what the uk is uh, you know all about yes what know. represents it yeah, yes. what represents. but first i'm going to give you these these are drinks for you to try uh, not right here but whenever you wish um but these are english drinks that i've um that are imported from from the uk oh my they're god called fentimans they're a botanically brewed drink uh so they use root ginger to naturally carbonate them. They're all different flavors. They're super fun. Um, and they got cane sugar rather than the high fructose. So they're, so they're a little sweet and um, I really enjoy them. So we got ginger beer. It's like a fiery ginger ale. Uh, Curiosity Cola is an English Coke. And then rose lemonades are most popular with uh, rose extract with a crisp lemonade. Why is it called Curiosity Cola? Ah, that's exactly why. I'm curious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's exactly it. <laughs> There's no reason apart from that. Yes. So, so yeah. Um, then uh, this I brought, it's it's to talk about the royal family. So uh, the, one of the biggest things, and I think a lot of people associate with us, is the, is the royal family. So the royal family is um, obviously been, been, been around from the start, but it's tourism for us as well. It's huge, mm-hmm. brings loads of people into the country. This is a commemorative um, cup that I that I got. It was actually my mum's and um, it was uh, for the coronation. So it's pretty cool. It's historic. 1953, um, June 2nd. Yep. So it's 1953 that cup was from. Wow. Um, and, but Royal Family is huge. It's, it, it, I think it it brings the whole country together as as a whole. Anytime they do an event, we all get together and um, we watch it on the telly or we go out to actually watch it in London and everything as well. It's And how we do the the events is incredible. So if you ever see a wedding or a funeral or anything, it's really well done. So, mm-hmm. so you said that these drinks were imported straight from the UK. How long ago did you do that? Do you import things no, often? So these are these are actually for our business. So we, we, uh, we do this for, for London Calling. So okay. yep, yeah, yeah, imported, yes. yep. Yeah. So London, London Calling yes. is the place you can get Curiosity Cola you get, if you're curious. If you're curious, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> and then this glass, you said it was your mom's? So it was, yeah, my mom's uh, glass that she got to commemorate the... Um, mm-hmm. uh, in 1952, so it's uh, mm-hmm. the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II's... Oh, 
Queen yeah. Elizabeth II's coronation. Where is it placed in your in your house? Uh, is it displayed? My, yeah, it's in my office uh, in uh, on a uh, in the cabinet behind behind mm-hmm. me. So yeah, mm-hmm. I've got all kinds of souvenirs and stuff from England on my. I couldn't bring them all. Yeah, I'd have a no. uh, yeah. I've got all kinds of fun stuff from my childhood. Uh, famous people that I may have met, autographs, all kinds of fun stuff. But this, this to me, kind of commemorates like that's what the UK mm-hmm. main part of the UK is the is the royal family. Do you have a flag display too? Maybe like in your office. You do. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a room. So one of our, our spare room for mm-hmm. guests that come over from from home and stuff. We actually have. Um, like scenes of London on the wall and everything. So it's the funniest thing when they come out and goes, I don't want to see England. No, I said, where I just come from. And I was like, yeah, I didn't think of that. Why it not? Fun. It's a free trip yeah, basically yeah. to England. Yeah, yes, on, yeah. yes. That's so fun. And yeah. I see that you also have a purple box yes, with you. Yes, I'm going to do it. Well, before I do that, the, 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 the cup was also about drinking and, and, and beer culture or the culture of pubs. Mm. So one of the other big things about the UK, and I think this is – this is our community, right? So in America, I feel like the uh, churches and the churches are, and schools are the kind of mm-hmm. community drivers here. Um, and we, uh, sadly, we don't have that in England. The you know churches are, are sadly falling apart a little bit, ma- 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 mainly historic. We mm-hmm. keep them up for that, but they're not well attended as such. Um, people use the pubs as their meeting place to to get together with people like-minded people and hang out and and do stuff so the pub culture is huge in in, in and it's not just about the drinking it's totally about the socialization networking networking absolutely so yep mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then the purple box is uh, is what one of my friends gave to my da- daughter when she was born. It's a little Everton soccer kit, which is cute as anything. So it's got the shorts, the socks and the and the top for Everton. So soccer is again huge in England. It's it's it it's what, you know, a lot of the country mm-hmm. watches and again it it gets people together. So we have the World Cup, the U- European Cup, all the different cups, but the World Cup is amazing to get mm-hmm. people together. So if you ever go over to England, I you know, it'd be great to see a, a soccer game. They're super fun uh, mm-hmm. to watch, but for me growing up since the age of 8 years old I played for a soccer team and I'm now 45 and I'm still playing soccer. It's huge in my life and um Really, really enjoy it. So soccer this is definitely is a big part beautiful. of it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. A little commemorative kit for. Uh, and it's never been opened. <laughs> Pretty much, it's still in its packaging. It's so cute. Yeah, oh my, my goodness, the socks are so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and then just a, a, a like a memento of, of history, mm-hmm. and the fact that you know all the buildings and I, like I said to you, the one of the pubs that we used to go to is from the 1500s mm-hmm. you know just a crazy amount of history mm-hmm. UK is very old country yeah and so I've got a huge or not a huge a fairly big uh, coin collection mm-hmm. that I've got and this is just one of them it's Beatrix Potter who was born actually over 150 years ago now but um, this is to commemorate her life of you know when she was 150. Uh, sorry, she's not 150, but 150 years ago, they'd mm-hmm. made a Beatrix Potter Peter Rabbit coin. Um, but it's just to kind of denote the fact that we've got such history in our country and um, all the fun things that, have, you know, all the events and everything that have happened, you know, years and years ago and is still relevant now. I mean, people still read her books and Absolutely. enjoy them now as well. So. Um, wow, I wish I could talk to you for like seven more hours about the UK and all the <laughs> history and interesting subjects too. Um, also, if you want to see all of these beautiful items that Neil brought into the studio, make sure you check out our YouTube channel, the American Dream Podcast. And Neil, thank you so much for visiting me. It feels like I feel alive. Oh, <laughs> I feel like my dream yes. has come true because yeah. I, it was my dream to meet somebody from the UK and mm. get to talk to a person like in person, not just, yeah. you know, the people people that taught me English obviously they were Russian people but mm. you know just like the audiobooks and all of that that was sure. my dream to actually speak to how did I do how was my English oh my gosh <laughs> uh, it, it, I do not speak another language so my admiration for you is, is off the charts really now is. I feel like I asked for a compliment no, which yeah, is... <laughs> no, I, absolutely brilliant English so I understood everything so I passed the exam it. absolutely did yes. great yes. okay I'll tell my mom about that she'll be proud of me thank you so Thumbs much up. for visiting me thank you very much Thanks for tuning in to the American Dream Podcast. For more episodes, subscribe on your favorite platform, keep dreaming, and see you next time.